Evident in many of the most famous paintings by Jacques-Louis David is a prophetic awareness for not only moments of great historical importance, but an incredible sense for drama in the compositions and conceits of these works. Paintings depicting critical moments in history of political intrigue, murder, or death, such as those paintings featuring Marat, Socrates, Patroclus, or Brutus, are imbued with a sense of even greater significance and impact through the neoclassical reincorporation of antique artistic style and homage to lend a timeless quality to the work. The domestic upheaval of his own country during the violence and civil turmoil of the French Revolution no doubt played a part in influencing this mode of painting, and provided him a first-hand account of the unpredictable tides of history and the power of redefining it through a grandiose narrative based on the archetypes of antiquity. Nowhere is this technique more obvious or effectively utilized as a method of reframing within an apparent historical context than in that body of work which David produced as one of the main political painters under Napoleon's French Republic and eventual empire. In these paintings, he makes direct allusion through elements of design, composition, color, and other hallmarks of the classical style to imbue a sense of historical weight to the events being depicted. Perhaps the clearest and most emblematic example of this implicit form of historical revisionism through neoclassical motifs is the iconic Bonaparte crossing the Great St. Bernard Pass, where the ambitious leader is idealistically posed in a moment of vainglorious triumph on horseback, with the finger pointed to the heavens and a capably stern look of leadership set upon his countenance. This clear evocation of the authority and reverence for the classical leaders of history is as ubiquitous as it is false, with historian Susan Jacques explaining that, though Napoleon reportedly rode a mule, not a horse, and slid partway down the mountains to Italy on his behind, David portrayed him heroically, riding a rearing white steed, his red cloak blowing in the wind. The effect of this compositional and artistic license, along with that of the Roman models, explains David's symbolic rather than truthful approach to the details of the painting, instead submitting to posterity a vision of Napoleon in the vein of Julius Caesar, King Solomon, or Alexander the Great, as a representation of his military and political brilliance. This apparent synonymy of characteristics and virtues is a tool David uses to help facilitate a subconscious understanding of Napoleon as the new great historical leader. The aspirations alluded to in that outstretched index finger would be realized in 1804, when Napoleon was crowned Emperor of France alongside his Empress Josephine before Pope Pius VII in the Notre Dame Cathedral. His coronation was the ultimate result of years of military campaigns and political maneuvering, and David was once again commissioned to record the event and ensure it the historical longevity his style had granted earlier paintings. This resulted in the 1807 oil painting, Consecration of the Emperor Napoleon I and Coronation of the Empress Josephine in the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Paris on the 2nd of December 1804. The warm palette of colors, including an imperial red and deep dark blacks, are seen again in other paintings which David made at the instruction of Bonaparte, such as the 1810 painting, The Distribution of the Eagle Standards, which gives the canon of this work an artistic continuity beyond its basis in the iconography of military heroes of yesteryear. In composition, the large-scale, multi-axis, dynamically and subtly arranged coplanar staging of the characters, all pivoting around the central focus of Napoleon, likewise displays characteristics in the tradition of the neoclassical style by borrowing from the classical interest in geometric and linear organization of elements within a frame. In the center is a crowd of his marshals and military leaders, while on the right is assembled mostly the clergymen and entourage of the Pope. Near the front right are the chief members of his government and political bodies, such as Charles-Francois Lebrun or Jean-Jacques-Régis de Commissary, whose profile stances mirror their emblems on the coins used in France under the consulate rule another practice fondly borrowed from the Roman tradition. To the left are members of his family, including many brothers and sisters. The attention paid to the blocking of the painting's main characters extends even further to the detail of the hundreds of people in attendance at the ceremony. David spent nearly a year individually meeting with several key members in attendance to sketch a basis of their likeness to be used in the final gigantic 20 by 32 foot canvas. He was sure not to leave himself out though, as David painted himself in the second tier of the audience stand with a sketchbook in hand. For all of the accuracy and dutiful research in the minute details, David manipulates some critical aspects of the scene for the sake of historical drama and symbolism, as had been done in the aforementioned case of the Alps crossing. Visible as a faint outline in the final painting, an earlier sketch of the scene had shown Napoleon placing the crown upon his own head, a controversial move considered disrespectful to the Pope, whose duty it was to crown the Emperor. A similar revision was made to the papal hand blessing Napoleon from behind, as seen in the final version. Originally, the Pope had had both of his hands crossed, 
but Napoleon and David recognized that it was important to preserve the instant sign of the blessing which the head of the Catholic Church had bestowed upon the ceremony, as to quell any further misgivings about the relationship with the Church. To better display an image of familial unity and fraternal respect, Napoleon's own mother and some of his brothers, who had been unable or unwilling to attend the coronation, were later added to the painting, surrounded by the entire rest of the Bonaparte family. In a similar attempt to bring notice to the historical parallels between the man being crowned emperor and the great political war leaders of the past, David illustrated Julius Caesar just to the right below Napoleon, hidden in ecclesiastical robes among the Pope's throng. Certainly, regardless of any exact certitude of authenticity of the piece, the painting The Coronation of Napoleon remains an ever-effective source of reverence and ethos for the Emperor Bonaparte, still attracting viewers at the Palace of Versailles or the Louvre, where it remains today, or in duplications abroad, where the imagery spread like his eagles across Europe.